What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be previewing week one of the final series for the AFL. It's finally here, October action and it all comes down to this. Eight teams will become six coming into the second week next week and well, in two weeks time in fact. Uh, we've got a buy this week so we're building towards probably what is the most unpredictable final series uh, we've had in recent times. So I look forward to going through each of these games and seeing exactly who's going to take which one out, who's going to end up in a prelim, who's going to be eliminated for season 2020, and who is going to be taking on each other next week in the second week. It's a big, big week, as I said, so let's get straight into this preview of week one of the AFL. 2020 final series. Well, let's get straight into it. The first game off the ranks is Port Adelaide versus Geelong. Now, Port fans, as you'll know, uh, I'll bring out a separate preview for this week, for this game coming next week. So make sure you keep an eye out for that, where I'll dive a little bit more into Port Adelaide's thinking and what they're planning to do for next week's big Thursday night clash at the Adelaide Oval. 26,500 people are going to be attending this one. So a 50% capacity, and I tell you what, this has a well, this has a thriller written all over it, doesn't it? Because Geelong are coming into the final series a little bit underdone, I reckon. Their form hasn't been great, and they've just gained Gary Ablett back, and we know they're an experienced side, but they're coming into this one not in as great form as they'd probably expect to be or as hoped to be. Um, and they haven't really left. They sort of peaked when they actually played Port Adelaide all those rounds ago, and beat them by 60 points at Metricon. But this is a completely different story. This is finals. This is against a Port Adelaide unit who's full of confidence, just got the minor premiership and finished the top of the table at the Adelaide Oval as well, which in a final series hasn't happened too often of late. And I feel like Port fans are going to be attending this one and really, really making the most of their opportunity to be attending a game. And the atmosphere is going to be electric. And uh, I'll tell you what, as a Port fan myself, I really do feel like Port Adelaide could do the job here. I reckon they're better set, their team's set, they're very much settled as they're going into the, uh, this final series. And Geelong, well, they're a dangerous side, they're a bogey side to Port Adelaide, and I do feel like that they're very much, they deserve favouritism in a way because they are the better side and in terms of experience, you know, they've been to finals before, they've had a... Had a pretty good run this year, and obviously the the looming factor is beating Port Adelaide um, earlier in the season by 10 goals. So this game has a bit of uncertainty about it, but I'm tipping Port Adelaide because I reckon at home, I, I feel like they'll rise to the occasion and get the monkey off the back. We go into the second game, which is Friday night football, the second qualifying final between Brit uh, Brisbane and Richmond at the Gabba. Brisbane have pretty much earned their right to be at the Gabba this year because, well, the grand final's going to be there. They've played almost all their home games up in Queensland, or almost all their games in general up in Queensland. And I reckon even though the Richmond Football Club are coming into this one full, of, full steam ahead, they've got plenty of form under their belt. They're the champions of last year. Uh, they know what finals are all about. They've spent the last four years just absolutely dominating all the final series bar 2018, which is, um, you know, a separate occasion, but they still made the prelim and were absolutely dominant. Then they've kept the, kept the same sort of team structure going into this year. And early on, it wasn't quite working, but they found that formula and that, that second to third tier, those players in those tiers have just risen to a new level. Um, and I'm talking like Vlost and Jack Graham have gone to a new level. Youngsters like Shy Bolton, um, Noah Bolter as well. He's been sensational down back. And Grimes has just been exceptional down there as well. And I think as a, a unit, they're very cohesive. They work well together. And Damien Hardwick and his troops should... I feel like they're going to come into this one favourites. But Brisbane, after last year's straight sets exit, will be hurting. And I reckon they can sense a golden opportunity coming into this one. They're going to play all their games at the Gabba if they can win this first qualifying final. Um, they'll go straight to a prelim at home and then you're going to get a grand final at home. So you're not going to travel anywhere. They've had the luxury of not having to go into state. And look, I don't think that's anything to do with uh, an excuse uh, if you happen to lose because, you know, it's it's just the circumstances we're in. 
it's how you play on the day and you've got to make the most of your opportunities. And Brisbane have been the team to um, miss a few opportunities that they no doubt would prefer to take in games. Uh, very ordinary. And we know against Richmond earlier in the year, they kicked four goals, 17. Um, and, you know, you can't have that type of um, discrepancy in the goals behind ratio because... It's going to hurt you come finals. Even something like an 8 goals 12, it's just going to hurt you. Um, and against a side like Richmond, you've got to make the most of that. And I feel like they will. You know, they've got the home crowd, the home ground advantage. This time last year when they played each other, Richmond ran over the top of them. And I feel like, again, this year that could happen. Um, but I f I, you just sense that Brisbane have a point to prove. And I reckon they're going to bounce back. And I reckon they'll take this one out against the Tigers at home. It's redemption day for the Lions, and I reckon they'll just be enough. We move into the first elimination final, St. Kilda versus the Western Bulldogs, and for me, this is a very intriguing game because they're both on a very, very similar level. I'm very surprised the Dogs are coming into favourites for this one because they snuck into the eight. They've had a good large portion of the, uh, well, sorry, they've had a good back end portion of the season. And a large part of that is due to their midfield with Bontepelli, McRae. Um, they're just absolutely dominant. Caleb Daniel off the off the half-back line has been a real force and he's one of the best kicks in the game. And uh, I think the, getting back Aaron Norton, they've been able to find another key forward, to find another outlet because Josh Bruce wasn't quite working for them. Um, and I, I just think you know, the dogs have that mixture that's right, but they can be exposed. Countless amount of times this year they've been exposed um, in the ruck more so with Tim English. Uh, I think with Rowan Marshall and Paddy Ryder, St Kilda could... Well, they did it early in the season in round two. They just got into Tim English and just were able to manipulate him and were so dominant in that ruck factor that uh, the midfield got first use and you know with players like Jack Steele around the footy, you, you know you're going to get good use out of that when you get first hit in the ruck and people like Rowan Marshall are going forward and hitting the scoreboard due to the factor of having that dual ruck but also you know ta tag teaming someone like English who's still a bit raw um, he's becoming one of the more dominant figures in terms of rucks in the AFL he's the dog's number one ruckman but I think if the Saints can do that again and expose English in the ruck they'll no doubt have first use going forward in the midfield and their pressure, St Kilda, once it's on, it, it's just another level. Players like Zach Jones just bring the pressure, bring the heat around the contest. They've got good forwards. Um, Gresham, unfortunately, won't be out there. But you know, they've still got outlets towards goal. And I feel like that maybe they might have the edge over the dogs, but I wouldn't be surprised. This is the, probably going to be one of the more closer games you'll see. Um, and at the Gabba, Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, I'm going to tip the Saints. I reckon they'll go uh, I'll go another week in the final series, unfortunate for the Dogs, but it's an interesting one, that's for sure. Last but not least, it will be the West Coast Eagles taking on Collingwood on the Saturday night at Optus Stadium. Fair to say, this is probably the more one-sided contest you'll see uh, come the first week of finals. I think the Eagles, I'll just say it straight out, they'll get the job done at home. They're not coming in with the greatest form. Um, they're sort of in that mid to low eight, uh, top eight ratio at the moment in terms of how they're playing. Um, but they're going to get some stars back. They won't have Elliot Yo, unfortunately. He'll miss the final series, but they have enough stars to counteract that. They'll still get Shuey Redden in that midfield. And Nat Newey, who's just been in that sensational form at the moment, no doubt he'll um, have a number on Grundy. And Grundy needs to stand up for Collingwood because he has been a bit lackluster. He was beaten in the last round of the final uh, of the minor season against Lysette. Um and you know they were pretty impressive Collingwood with that finals type pressure that they brought to that game. But I think it's a whole another level when you're travelling over to Optus Stadium. They will have the luxury of quarantining now. A lot of people think that's a negative. I think that's a positive because they won't have to travel a day before. They won't have to adjust time zones. They'll probably get an opportunity to train at Optus Stadium. So it'll be like a normal build-up for them at, as a as a home game sort of thing. Um, but, you know, you've got your whole crowd against you. You've got West Coast who are going to come in with looking for a bit of redemption um, after last year's final series. And I feel like 
right now, West Coast have the edge. They have the key forwards, the three key forwards now, Oscar Allen, Jack Darling, and Josh Kennedy. It's just a matter of West Coast switching it on um, and playing to their strengths because if Collingwood let them do that, they're going to run right over the top of them. But Collingwood, deep down, I feel like they'll have that ability. They, they believe that they can get the job done. I just don't know whether or not they can sustain it for four quarters with West Coast, especially as I get, again, as I said, I'd opt the stadium. You think it's a pretty straightforward pick, but it is finals and you just never, never know. But I'm going to tip Eagles to win this one, but it'll be closer than people think. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my preview of the first week of finals. We'll be doing this every single week leading up to the grand final. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about all these games and what you're feeling and who's your tip for these ones. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more AFL and for Port Adelaide content if you're a Port fan coming your way across this final series. It's going to be a biggie, and I'm very, very, very excited that finals are now finally here. My name's Anthony. Thank you very much for watching, and as always... Come a pair.